Hello everyone. My name is Nicolás Tapia, a student from Chile, and I am going to present our paper titled Red, Deep Procurer Neural Networks for Sleep EEG Event Detection. Sleep experts rely on biological signals to study our bodies when we sleep. An important tool is the EEG, which they use to peek into the brain and its electrical activity. Generally, they collect whole night recordings. Here you can see an example with four different subjects with during eight hours of sleep. Experts analyze them to answer questions like the mechanisms of learning, memory, and neurological disorders. In this 10 second segment from the second subject, we recognize two important types of sleep EEG events. In blue, you can see two sleep spindles, birds of oscillatory activity of 11 to 16 hertz. And in red, you can see one key complex, a high amplitude biphasic wave. Visual detection is time consuming considering the time scale of these events, the length of the recordings and the number of subjects, motivating automatic detection methods. The main contributions of this work are the following. We propose a deep learning approach based on convolutional and recurrent neural networks for sleep EEG event detection called recurrent event detector or RED for short. Additionally, we propose two variants of RED. Red time, where the input is the raw EEG signal, and red CWT, where we compute a spectrogram using the continuous wavelet transform, or CWT for short. In the literature, the best methods use deep learning. One of them is dosed. They specify default events with a default duration and evenly spaced centers. A convolutional neural network is applied to a large EEG segment and then a fully connected layer predicts both the deviations from defaults and the classes. This method is limited by the adjustment of the default duration and centers and by its linear processing of context at the last layer. Another method is spindle net, specific for sleep spindles. A small window of EEG and its filter version are processed in parallel by a stack of convolutional and recurrent layers. Then fully connected layers use these outputs together with power features to predict whether the window belongs to a spindle. This method is limited by the adjustment of the window width and by its small context. Unlike previous approaches, RED has better context modeling and avoids the use of arbitrary input partitions. Our method processes a large EEG segment of T-samples. In this example, we want to predict sleep spindles. The first block implements local feature extraction. In red time, it is composed of one-dimensional convolutional layers applied directly to the EEG segment. After an initial batch normalization layer, we stack three convolutional blocks with increasing number of filters. Each of them has two convolutions with kernel size three, batch normalization, and ReLU, followed by an average pooling layer. In red time, we first apply the CWT to obtain a complex spectrogram. The real and imaginary parts are concatenated in the channel axis, and this two-dimensional representation is processed by two-dimensional convolutional layers. After an initial batch normalization along the frequency axis and an average pooling layer, we stack two convolutional blocks with a similar design than before. At the end, we flatten the output preserving the temporal axis. In both models, the output of this stage is a time series of feeders. After this stage, both models have the same architecture. The second block implements temporal context modeling. It is composed of bidirectional recurrent layers so that contexts from both the past and the future are integrated. Specifically, we stack two bidirectional LSTMs regularized with dropout. The third block implements by sample classification. It is composed of two convolutional layers with kernel size one. The first layer has dropout and ReLU, and the second layer has softened activation to predict class probabilities. The output is a dense segmentation of the EEG segment, with zero corresponding to the background class and one corresponding to the event of interest, in this case, sleep spindles. The loss function is the cross-entropy loss with respect to the expert annotations, minimized by the Adam optimizer. The start and end times of each event are obtained by thresholding this probability. This threshold is adjusted after training to maximize the F1 score. For all experiments, 
we use segments of 20 seconds. We quantify the agreement between detections and expert annotations using the intersection over union, or IOU for short, which is the radio between the length of the intersection and the length of the union with an ideal value of one. First, we match each expert annotation to the detection that gives the highest IOU. After matching, true positives are created when the IOU is higher than a threshold. We adopt the commonly used threshold of 0.2, but other values are considered for analysis too. Using this definition of true positives, we use the metrics precision, recall, and F1 score with an ideal value of one. For our experiments, we use the second subset of the mass dataset, which consists of 19 whole night recordings from different subjects. Here, sleep spindles were scored according to experts one and two, and K complexes were scored according to expert one. Therefore, we have three detection tasks. We studied the single channel case only using as input the annotated EEG signal. Additionally, we used only the 15 subjects scored by both experts, leaving eight subjects to train, three subjects to validate, and four subjects to test using tenfold cross-validation. Our models significantly outperform baselines according to the F1 score in the three detection tasks. Red time and red CWT have similar performance with differences that are not statistically significant. Now we focus on red CWT for simplicity. Our model outperforms baselines in both precision and recall as well. Moreover, the operating point is close to the diagonal, which means a balanced trade-off between false positives and false negatives. In sleep spindle detection, according to expert one, we see that the F1 score is stable for small IOU thresholds. However, the performance of our model is more robust to higher thresholds, which means that our detections have more accurate delimitations. It is more visible when we look at the histogram of the IOU values of all matchings. Here, our distributions is closer to one with a higher mean IOU. Similar observations apply to sleep spindle detection according to the second expert. However, the F1 score is not as stable as before because the intersection agreement has more variation. The intersection agreement of our model is remarkably better in K-complex detection. The context needed around a K-complex for accurate delimitation is larger than for sleep spindle detection where the oscillatory activity is faster. The large difference with respect to those suggests that our model makes a better use of context. Here we illustrate our predictions in sleep spindle detection according to expert one. We plot the expert annotations over the signal and the predictions of our model below with a solid line representing the probability and the shaded areas representing the detections. The intersection agreement is high as mentioned in the previous results. We also illustrate our predictions in K-complex detection where the intersection agreement is even higher. You can see that red time and red CWT produce similar outputs in both cases. In conclusion, there are no arbitrary input partitions because predictions are then segmentations. Moreover, there are no windows because context is integrated by the recurrent layers at each prediction. These characteristics make the, pro the approach simpler, making it more likely to generalize to different sleep EEG events. Indeed, using the same model, we outperformed previous methods both in sleep spindle and K-complex detection. In the future, red could be made more interpretable. Even when red CWT and red time showed a similar performance, red CWT might be more interpretable thanks to the spectrogram. Additionally, red could admit a calibration to be more useful in the clinical practice and adapt its predictions to the experts. If you have any concerns, please, please do not hesitate in writing me. Thank you for your attention.